this emergency is over, we will need many, many more such rescue stations. Good evening, and welcome to Newcastle After Dark. We are your hosts, the management, coming to you from Viola's Market and the Bessemer Hotel, bringing you films that are a feast for the mind. Tonight's film is 1968's Night of the Living Dead, a true classic, starring Dwayne Jones. This has Judith O'Day, Carl Hardman, and Marilyn Eastman. And, you know, it, of course, was written by John Russo and George Romero. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, and it's truly, truly a classic. I mean, it really is. Oh, yes. And, um, and it is filmed very close to us, about 45 minutes away, Evan City. Yes. Yeah. And it holds a special place in our hearts. Therefore, as a tribute, the entire episode will be in black and white. And if you haven't seen this movie before, well, here's your opportunity to watch it with us. That's right. Right? And if you have, it's definitely worth watching again. It is. Yeah. So sit back. Relax and enjoy 1968's Night of the Living Dead. They ought to make the day the time changes, the first day of summer. What? Well, it's 8 o'clock and it's still light. A lot of good the extra daylight does us. Now, we've still got a three-hour drive back. We're not going to be home until after midnight. Well, if it really bugged you, Johnny, you wouldn't do it. You think I want to blow Sunday on a scene like this? You know, I figure we're either going to have to move Mother out here or move the grave into Pittsburgh. Well, she can't make a trip like this. Oh, I know that she can't. Is there any of that candy left? No. Look at this thing. We still remember. I don't. You know, I don't even remember what the man looks like. Johnny, it takes you five minutes. Yeah, five minutes to put the wreath on the grave and six hours to drive back and forth. Mm -hmm. Mother wants to remember, so we trot 200 miles into the country and she stays at home. Well, we're here, John, all right? Back on. Oh. Uh, ladies and hey, gentlemen... Good. We're coming back on the air after an interruption due to technical problems. Nothing wrong with the radio. Must have been the station. Which row is it in? sleep on the time change. I think you complain just to hear yourself talk. 
There it is. I wonder what happened to the one from last year. Each year we spend good money on these things. We come out here and the one from last year's gone. Well, the flowers die and the caretaker or somebody takes them away. Yeah, a little spit and polish, you can clean this up. Sell it next year. Wonder how many times we bought the same one. Come on, Barb. Church was this morning, huh? Hey, I mean praying's for church, huh? Come on. I haven't seen you in church lately. <laughs> well... Not much sense in my going to church. Do you remember one time when we were small, we were out here? It was from right over there. I jumped out at you from behind the tree, and Grandpa got all excited, and he shook his fist at me, and he said, Boy, you be damned to hell! <laughs> remember that? Right over there. Well, you used to really be scared here. Johnny. Hey, you're still afraid. Stop it now. I mean it. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it. You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it. You're acting like a child. They're coming for you. Look, there comes one of them now. He'll hear you. Here he comes now. I'm getting out of here. Johnny.
it's all right. Don't worry about him, I can handle them. Probably be a lot more of them as soon as they find out about us. The truck is out of gas. This pump out here is locked, is there a key? We can try to get out of here if we can get some gas, is there a key? I suppose you've tried this. Do you live here? some other people. Maybe, maybe we better take some food. I'll see if I can find some food. Two of them out there. Have you seen any more around here? I can I take care of those know. two. I well, don't I know, know you're afraid, but we have I to... don't know! I don't know! What's happening? Oh. They 
know we're in here now. Don't look at it. More lights on in this house. See if you can find some wood, some boards, something there by the fireplace, something we can nail this place up. Oh, God, that... Look, I know you're afraid. I'm afraid too. But we have to try to board the house up together. Now, I'm going to board up the windows and the doors. Do you understand? We'll be all right here. We'll be all right here until someone comes to rescue us. But we'll have to work together. You'll have to help me. Now, I want you to go in and get some wood so I can board the place up. Do you understand? OK? OK?
picking up that strong. Yeah, I want you to pick out some nails. Pick out the biggest ones you can find. Yeah, this room looks pretty secure. If we have to, we can run in here and board up the doors. Won't be long for those things be back pounding their way in here. They're afraid now. They're afraid of fire. I found that out. Place back down the road called Beatman's, Beatman's Diner. Anyhow, that's where I found that truck I have out there. There's a radio in the truck. I jumped in to listen to it when a big gasoline truck came screaming right across the road with it must have been 10, 15 of those things chasing after it grabbing and holding on. Now, I didn't see them at first. I could just see that the truck was moving in a funny way. And those things were catching up to it. The truck went right across the road. I slammed on my brakes to keep from hitting it myself. It went right through the guardrail. I guess, I guess the driver must have cut off the road into that gas station by Beekman's Diner. It went right through the billboard, ripped over a gas pump, and never stopped moving. By now, it was like a moving bonfire. Didn't know if the truck was going to explode or what. I could still hear the man screaming. thing is just backing away from it. I looked back at the diner to see if, if there was anyone there who could help me. It was when I noticed that the entire place had been encircled. There wasn't a sign of light left except... By now there were no more screams. I realized that I was alone with 50 or 60 of those things just standing there, staring at me. I, I started to drive. I just plowed right through them. They didn't move. They didn't run or just stood there staring at me. I just wanted to crush them. They scattered through the air like bugs. We were riding in the cemetery, Johnny and me. Johnny. We, we came to Puerto Rico on my father's grave. Johnny and, and he said, can I have some candy, Barbara? And we didn't have any. And, oh, it's hot in here, hot. And, and he said, oh, it's late. Why did we start so late? And I said, Johnny, if you'd gotten up earlier, we wouldn't be late. Johnny asked me if I were afraid. And I said, I'm not afraid, Johnny. And then... This man started walking up the road. He came slowly 
And Johnny kept teasing me and saying, he's coming to get you, Barbara. And I laughed at him and said, Johnny, stop it. And then Johnny ran away. And I, I went up to this man and I was going to apologize. Why don't you just keep calm? And I looked up and I said, Goody. And he grabbed me. He grabbed me and he ripped at me. He held me and he ripped at my clothes. I think you should just calm down. Oh, oh I screamed, Johnny! Johnny, help me! Oh, help me! And he wouldn't let me go. He ripped. And then Johnny came and he ran and he had, he fought this man. And I got so afraid, I ran, I ran, I ran. And Johnny didn't come. We've got, we have to wait for Johnny. Maybe we better go out and get him. We have to go out and get Johnny. He's out there. Please, don't you hear me? We've got to go out and get him. Please! We have got to go get Johnny! Please help me! Please! Don't you know what's going on out there? This is no Sunday school picnic. Don't you understand? My brother is alone! Your brother is dead. No! My brother is not dead! Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, and because of the crisis which is even now developing, this radio station will remain on the air, day and night. This station and hundreds of other radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country are pooling their resources through an emergency network hookup to keep you informed of all developments. At this hour, we repeat, these are the facts as we know them. There is an epidemic of mass murder being committed by a virtual army of unidentified assassins. The murders are taking place in villages, cities, rural homes, and suburbs with no apparent pattern or reason for the slayings. It seems to be a sudden, general explosion of mass homicide. We have some descriptions of the assassins. Eyewitnesses say they are ordinary-looking people. Some say they appear to be in a kind of trance. Others describe them as being... So, at this point, there is no really authentic way for us to say who or what to look for and guard yourself against. Misshapen monsters. Reaction of law enforcement officials is one of complete bewilderment at this hour. So far, we have been unable to determine that any kind of organized investigation is yet underway. Police, sheriff deputies, and emergency ambulances are literally deluged with calls for help. And the scene can best be described as mayhem. Mayors of Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Miami governors of several eastern and midwestern states have indicated the National Guard may be mobilized at any moment, but that has not happened as yet. The only advice our reporters have been able to get from official sources is for private citizens to stay in their homes behind locked doors. Do not venture outside for any reason until the nature of this crisis has been determined and until we can advise what course of action to take. Keep listening to radio and TV for any special instructions as this crisis develops further. Thousands of office and factory workers are being urged to stay at their places of employment, not to make any attempt to get to their homes. 
However, in spite of this urging and warning, streets and highways are packed with frantic people trying to raise their families or apparently to flee just anywhere. I repeat, the safest course of action at this time is simply to stay where you are. in our newsroom. Latest word also from National Press Services in Washington, D.C., now tells us that the emergency presidential conference, which we've just mentioned, will include high-ranking scientists from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. That's the extent of this latest bulletin. Repeating, members of this cabinet, the FBI, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the scientists from NASA within the hour. All radio and TV stations throughout the country, including the one to which you're listening, have joined their facilities in an emergency network to bring you this news as it develops. We urge you to stay tuned to radio and TV and to stay indoors at all costs. Late reports reaching this newsroom tell of frightened people seeking refuge in churches, schools, and government buildings, demanding shelter and protection from the wholesale murder which apparently is engulfing much of the nation. Law enforcement officials are at a loss to explain or even at this hour, even to theorize about the reasons for this wave of murder. So far, the price we are able to give the public is some of the chief, T.K. Dunmore of Camden, North Carolina, was quoted as saying, quote, Tell the people, for God's sake, to get off the streets. Tell them to go home and lock their doors and windows up tight. We don't know what kind of murder-happy characters we have here. I found a gun and some bullets out there. It was only late yesterday. Oh, when and these. It became clear we were facing some kind of national emergency. When first reports began filtering in, newsmen and law enforcement agencies were of the opinion... This place is boarded up pretty solid now. In nature. However, as these we ought to be all right here for a while. Dramatically, it was soon apparent that we have a gun and bullets, food and the radio. Began to suspect an obscure kind of conspiracy. Sooner or later, someone bound to come and get us out. Creatures from outer space. So again, we join with law enforcement agencies in urging you to seek shelter in a building. Lock the doors and windows securely. Hey, that's us. We're doing all right. Cautious of any suspicious strangers. And keep tuned to your radio and television for survival instructions and further details of this continuing story. Look, I don't know if you're hearing me. But I'm going upstairs now. It's almost as though some critical balance of... If anything should try to break in here, I can hear it from up there. I'll be down to take care of it. Everything is all right for now. I'll be back to reinforce the windows and doors later. But you'll be all right for now, okay? Okay. Civil defense officials in Cumberland have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers.
consistent reports from witnesses to the effect that people who acted as though they were in a kind of trance were killing and eating their victims prompted authorities to examine the bodies of some of the victims. Medical authorities in Cumberland have concluded that in all cases, the killers are eating the flesh of the people they murdered. Repeating this latest bulletin just received moments ago from Cumberland, Maryland, civil defense authorities have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. Medical examination of victims' bodies shows conclusively that the killers are eating the flesh of the people they kill. And so this incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. It's difficult to imagine such a thing actually happening, but these are the reports we have been receiving and passing on to you, reports which have been verified as completely as is possible in this confused situation. It is happening, and it would appear that no one is safe from this wave of mass murder. <laughs> We're from town. City, a radio. County, Pennsylvania. The Butler County Sheriff has verified that reports of murder victims being partially eaten by their slayers is true. No further details available at this time. However, my you guys been down there? I could use some help up here. That's the cellar. It's the safest place. You mean you didn't hear the racket we were making up here? How were we supposed to know what was going on? Could have been those things for all we knew. That girl was screaming. Sure, you must know what a girl screaming sounds like. Those things don't make any noise. Anybody would know somebody that needed help. Look, it's kind of hard to hear what's going on from down there. We thought we could hear screams, but for all we knew, that could have meant those things were in the house afterwards. And you wouldn't come up and help? Well, if there were more of them. The racket sounded like the place was being ripped apart. How were we supposed to know what was going on? Now, wait a minute. You just got finished saying you couldn't hear from down there. Now you say it sounded like the place was being ripped apart. It would be nice if you'd get your story straight, man. All right, now you tell me. I'm not going to take that kind of a chance when we got a safe place. We luck into a safe place, and you're telling us we got to risk our lives just because somebody might need help, huh? Yeah, something like that. All right, why don't we settle this? Look, this mister, we came up. Okay, we're here. Now I suggest we all go back downstairs before any of those things find out we're in here. They can't get in here. You got the whole place boarded up? Yeah, most of it. I'll put a few spots upstairs. They won't be hard to fix. You're insane. The cellar's the safest place. I'm telling you, they can't get in here. And I'm telling you, those things turned over our car. We were damn lucky to get away at all. Now you tell me those, those things can't get through this lousy pile of wood? His wife and kids downstairs. The kids hurt. Well, I still think we're better off up here. We could strengthen everything up, Mr. Cooper. With all of us working, we could fix this place up in no time. We have everything we need up here. We can take all that stuff downstairs with us. Man, you're really crazy, you know that? You got a million windows up here. All these windows, you're gonna, you're gonna make them strong enough to keep these things out, huh? I told you, those things don't have any strength. I smashed three of them and pushed another one out the door. Did you hear me when I told you they turned over our car? Oh, hell, any good five men can do that. That's my point. Only there's not going to be five or even ten. There's going to be twenty, thirty, maybe a hundred of those things. And as soon as they know we're here, this place is going to be crawling with them. Well, if they're that many, they'll probably get us wherever we are. <sighs> Look, the cellar. The cellar, there's only one door, right? Just one door, that's all we have to protect. Tom and I fix it so it locks and boards from the inside. But up here, all these windows, why, we'd never know where they were going to hit us next. You got a point, Mr. Cooper. But down in the cellar, there's no place to run to. I mean, if they did get in, there'd be no back exit. We'd be done for. Uh... We can get out of here if we have to. And we got windows to see what's going on outside. But down there, with no windows, if a rescue party did come, we wouldn't even know it. But the cellar is the strongest place. The cellar is a death trap. I don't know, Mr. Cooper. I think he's right. You know how many's out there? I don't know. I think maybe six or seven. Look, you two can do whatever you like. I'm going back down to the cellar, and you better decide, because I'm going to board up that door, and I'm not going to unlock it again, no matter what happens. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Cooper. No, I'm not going to wait. I've made my decision. Now, you make yours. Now, wait a minute. Let's think about this. We can make it to the cellar if we have to. And if we do decide to stay down there, we'll need some things from up here. So let's at least consider this a while. If you box yourself in the cellar and those things get in the house, you've had it. At least up here you have a fighting chance. 
Yeah, it looks like about eight or ten out there now. There's more than there were. There are a lot out back, too. So far, the best advice there is... Welcome back. Well, you may have noticed the telephone on the table and asked yourself, you know, why? what's up with that telephone? Well, that phone actually belonged to George Romero. That's right. Now, this come from an auction in the Pittsburgh area, and I guess it was his office phone. And we figured as a tribute, we would present the phone. Definitely. As well as, you notice, no waistcoats. Yeah, not this time. Not this time. But I'll tell you what. That phone rings, show's over. You won't be seeing this. No, you'll be right. seeing me jump over the table. <laughs> There'll be another movie playing. <laughs> Some cartoons. If any. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? If any. You know, what I like about this movie from the start is that five, six minutes in, action is already there. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I do. I agree. And, you know, the thing that really stands out is, you know, the acting. <laughs> they were just some local folks. Yeah. I mean, Dwayne Jones, what, he was from New York? He was from New York. He was an actor, you know. But tremendous. Tremendous. Great job. And there's a lot of improv Yes. in this as well. Um, Judith O'Day, uh, you know, it's Barbara, uh, when she's um, telling Ben about what happened in yes. the uh, graveyard. You know, I mean, like the whole story up to there. You know, there was no script there, you know? No. So They, they improvised. Yeah, Dwayne Jones, same thing. When he's taking apart that table, I mean, that's all... That's all right there. That's all improv. And if you think that's an easy thing, try to improvise some dialogue right now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'd be like, but let it be believable. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, it really works well. It, it does work know, well. It really does. You know, one of the other things, we had saw a couple of the um, colorized versions of this movie. Mm. You know, I mean, but don't get me wrong, because it's really fun to see what it would look like in color. You know, it is. You have to watch it, yeah. But I have to admit, you know, I thought the color added a little um, cheesiness to it. It looked more like, really like an independent film, a B film of the time. And yes. um, I think the black and white just really works. Yes, it helps convey the atmosphere of despair. It does. And, you know, they could have, uh, in the end, uh, you know, they started off with about $6,000 to yeah. make this. In the end, they had about, you know, 114000 So they could have, you know, um, you know, put this on color film. Yes. They decided not to, and I'm actually glad that they decided not to. And everybody involved in this film is in this film. Yeah. You know, they were in it 100%. Yeah. You know, there's a lot that goes on, um, not just in front of the camera, but, but behind it as well with a lot of yes. the same people. You know, John Russo, who's one of the co-writers, um, he's in the scene where the zombie uh, gets it in the head with the tire iron. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just one, you know. And they were into it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got to remember that before this film, there was no subgenre of zombie films. Right. This is. This changed everything that would yes. come after, as we know, zombie films. Yes. I mean, really, yeah. I mean, it changed everything for us for a, for a low budget, you know, for us local film. Yes. You know, to have that impact is fantastic. Yeah. This was not, you know, a Hollywood film. That's right. And, you know, they all pulled what six hundred dollars a piece. Together, yeah. To start this film. To start this. And yeah. It was originally entitled Monster Flick. Monster Flick. Yeah. You know? And they just wanted to make a movie. Yeah. I mean, really, you know, the, um, you know, uh, they had a company, what was it, uh, the Latent... Latent Image. And uh, they were doing uh, commercials, yeah. you know, uh, in Pittsburgh. And, um, but they wanted to make, hey, you know, it would be fun. Yeah. You know, can we do fun. it? You yeah. know, that kind of thing. So, and look at what they created. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. So let's get back to Night of the Living Dead.
got to fix these boards. You're crazy. Those things are going to be in every window and door in this place. We've got to get down into the cellar. Go down in your damn cellar. Get out of here! I'm, I'm taking the girl with me. You leave her here. Keep your hands off her. And everything else that's up here, too. Because if I stay up here, I'm fighting for everything up here. And the radio and the food is part of what I'm fighting for. Now, if you're going down the cellar, get. It's the man's insane. He's insane. We've, we've got to have food down there. We've got a right. This is your house. We've got a right. You going down there with him? Well, I... Yes or no, this is your last chance. No beating around the bush. Listen, I got a kid down there. She, she can't possibly... I couldn't bring her up here. She can't possibly take all the racket and those, those things smashing through the windows. Well, you're her father. If you're stupid enough to go die in that trap, that's your business. However, I am not stupid enough to follow you. It is tough for the kid that her old man is so stupid. Now, you get the hell down in the cellar. You can be the boss down there. I'm boss up here. You bastards. You know, I won't open this door again. I mean it. Mr. Cooper, with your help, we can... With my help. Let him go, man. His mind is made up. Just let him go. Wait a minute. Judy, come on up here, honey. You're going to let them get hurt, too, huh? It's all right, honey. Go ahead. Together, man, we can fix it up real good. There, there's lots of places we can run to up here. Mr. Cooper, we'd all be a lot better off if all three of us were working together. Hey. Hey, kid. He's wrong, you know. I'm not boxing myself in down there. Well, we're safe now. It's boarded up tight. What about Tom and Judy? They want to stay up there and let them. There are two other people upstairs, a man and a girl. We heard the screaming. Yeah, but I didn't know who they were, and I wasn't about to take any unnecessary chances. Of course not, Harry. Is she all right? I don't know what it is. She feels warm. Maybe it's shock. Where'd you get the bandage? Some laundry in a basket. I tore a sheet. Let them stay upstairs. Let them. Too many ways those monsters can get in up there. We'll see who's right. We'll see when they come begging me to let them in down here. That's important, isn't it? What? To be right, everybody else to be wrong. What do you mean by that? Does anyone up there know why we're being attacked? <sighs> Whatever it is, it isn't just happening here. It's some kind of mass murder. It's going on everywhere. The radio said to stay inside. Radio? Radio upstairs. I heard a news bulletin. There's a radio upstairs and you boarded us in down here? I know what I'm doing. What did it say? Nothing. Nothing. They don't know anything yet. The, there's mass murder everywhere and, and people are supposed to look for a safe place to hide. Take the boards off that door. We are staying down here, Helen. Harry, that radio is at least some kind of communication. If the authorities know what's happening, well, they'll send people for us so they tell us what to do. How are we going to know what's going on if we lock ourselves in this dungeon? We may not enjoy living together, but dying together isn't going to solve anything. Those people aren't our enemies. Mr. Cooper! Mr. Cooper, Ben found the television set upstairs. 
just go up. Tom? Yeah? If Judy would come downstairs for a few minutes, Harry and I could come upstairs. Okay, yeah, right away. Will you do it? Do I have to? Look, honey, nothing's gonna get done with them down there and us up here. Do this for me. Okay. Okay, open up. Don't be afraid of me. I'm Helen Cooper, Harry's wife. This place is ridiculous. Look at this. There's a million weak spots up here. Give me one of those. Her brother was killed. see a damn thing. There could be 50 million of those things out there. That's how much good these windows are. Why don't you do something to help somebody? Here I have it. Drag a couple of those chairs together. There's a socket over here. You better watch this and try to understand what's going on. I don't want anyone's life on my hands. Is there anything I can do to help? I don't want to hear any more from you, mister. If you stay up here, you take orders from me. And that includes leaving the girl alone. It's on. It's on. There's no sound. Play with the rabbit ears. It reports, incredible as they seem, are not the results of mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. What do they think we're imagining all this? Shut up! in all parts of the country. The wave of murder which is sweeping the eastern third of the nation is being committed by creatures who feast upon the flesh of their victims. First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened and almost incoherent. Officials and newsmen at first discounted those eyewitness descriptions as being beyond belief. However, the reports persisted. The medical examinations of some of the victims bore out the fact that they had been partially devoured. I think we have some late word of just arriving, and I'll interrupt to bring this to you. This is the latest disclosure in a report from National Civil Defense Headquarters in Washington. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. A widespread investigation of reports from funeral homes, morgues, and hospitals has concluded that the unburied dead 
are coming back to life and seeking human victims. It's hard for us here to believe what we're reporting to you, but it does seem to be a fact. When this emergency first began, radio and television was advising people to stay inside, behind locked doors for safety. Well, that situation has now changed, and we're able to report a definite course of action for you. Civil defense machinery has been organized to provide rescue stations with food, shelter, medical treatment, and protection by armed National Guardsmen. Stay tuned to the broadcasting stations in your local area for this list of rescue stations. This list will be repeated throughout our news coverage. Look for the name of the rescue station nearest you and make your way to that location as soon as possible. So we have that truck. We can get some gas. We can get out of here. There's a pump out by the shed. I know that's why I pulled in here, but it's locked. Emergency meeting called this afternoon by the president. Since convening, this conference of the presidential cabinet, the FBI, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the CIA, has not produced any public information. Why are space experts being consulted about an earthbound emergency? Well, so far, all the betting on the answer to that question centers on the recent Explorer satellite shot to Venus. That satellite, you'll recall, started back to Earth, but never got here. That's the space vehicle which orbited Venus and then perp was purposely destroyed by NASA when scientists discovered it was carrying a mysterious high-level radiation with it. Could that radiation be somehow responsible for the wholesale murders we're now suffering? Newsman Don Quinn in Washington has posed those questions. It's obvious our best move is to try to get out of here. How are you going to get over to that pump? Look! Uh, You're coming from a meeting regarding the explosion of the Venus probe, is that right? Uh, yes, yes, that was the uh, subject of the meeting. You feel there is a connection between this and the there's phenomenon? A, there's a definite connection, a definite connection. In well, other words, no. you feel that the radiation on the Venus probe is enough to call these, cause these mutations? There was a very high degree of radiation. Well, just a minute. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that that's certain at all. I don't but think that has the been uh, a explanation that we have at this time. In other words, it is the military's viewpoint that the radiation is not the cause of the mutation. I can't speak for the entire military at this time, gentlemen. To I must disagree with these gentlemen presently until we, uh, until this is irrefutably proved. Uh, everything is uh, being done that can be done. We'll have to hurry for our next meeting. Uh, uh, Professor, you feel that there is a definite connection between them. Definite connection as far yeah. as Dr. Keller and myself. Doctor, please. I, I thought we decided that is not proved yet. But, uh, was it? Where, was the satellite uh, when the satellite was, was exploded? An unusual amount of radiation enough to cause mutation yes, under certain circumstances. Do. Could have uh, happened yeah, to have a know, bearing on it. On it does seem to have a bearing. Yes. Will, will, there be a, will there be a reply for, this, for the Later. Press? Yes. There will be a reply. Yes. Later this afternoon. Hey, hey. Well, there, there, will be a, there will be a report this afternoon. There, perhaps there will be yes. a report. Yes. A, a Later. Report. Will you close the window? We are doing everything possible to solve the problem. We're hoping to get some further explanation of this. We've incredible. heard all we need to know. We have to try to get out of here. He said the rescue stations have doctors and medical supplies. If we could get Karen there, we could get help for her. Elmo is one of the world's foremost authorities on space science and technology. Willard. We I saw a sign that said Willard. Moment, so it's only about 17 miles from here. You know this area. You from around here? Judy and I are both from around here. We were on our way up to the lake to go swimming. And Judy had a radio, and we heard the first reports about this. So we knew the old house was here, and we came in and found the lady upstairs dead. Then these other people came. We went down into the basement and put a bar across the door, and it is pretty strong. How could we possibly get away from here? We've got a sick child, two women, one woman out of her head, three men, and the place is surrounded with these things. Dr. Grimes, your entire staff, I know, has been working very hard to find some solution to these things that are happening. Do you have any answers at this time? Yes, we have some answers. Uh, but first, let me stress the importance of seeking medical attention for anyone who's been injured in any way. We don't know yet uh, what complications might result from such injuries. How bad has your kid been hurt? Good advice, Doctor. Now, how about the basic problem um, of well, Look, you go down there and tell... Cause and cause Judy? Uh, yeah, you tell Judy to come up here and you stay with the kid, all right? In the cold room at the university, uh, we had a cadaver, a cadaver from uh, which all four limbs had been amputated. Sometime early this morning, it opened its eyes and began to move its trunk. It was dead, 
but it opened his eyes and tried to move. They watch upstairs. Did she ask for me? She had to do anything. I don't understand. Baby. It's mommy. I heard. I'll come back down as soon as I find out what they want. Thank you, Judy. The body should be disposed of at once, preferably by cremation. Well, how long after death, then, does the body become reactivated? It's only a matter of minutes. Minutes? Well, that doesn't give people time to make any arrangements. Oh, no, you're right. It doesn't give them time to make funeral arrangements. The bodies must be carried to the street and, and, and burned. Uh, they must be burned immediately. Soak them with gasoline and burn them. The bereaved will have to forego the dubious comforts that a funeral service will give. Uh, they're just dead flesh and dangerous. I see. Judy, I need you to find some bed spreads or sheets to tear up into small strips, okay? Is there a fruit cellar here? Yes. We need some bottles or jars to make Molotov cocktails and hold them off while we try to escape. Hey, there's a big can of kerosene down there. I'll see what I can find. I'll look for the bottles. There's a big key ring down there. There may be a key to the gas pump on it. I'll check. We can toss the cocktails from a window upstairs. Meantime, a couple of us can go out and try to get the gas and come back for the rest of the people. But that'll leave a door open someplace. Yeah, that's right. It better be this door. It's closer to the truck. Before we go out, we'll put some supplies behind the cellar door. While we're gone, the rest of you can hold up in there. I found some fruit jars in the cellar. And there's a key on here that's labeled for the gas pump out back. I'm not really that used to the truck. I found it abandoned. I can handle the truck, no sweat. You're it, then. You and I'll go. We'll put whatever lumber we find behind the cellar door. You can go upstairs and toss the cocktails from a window. Tom, you and I will have to unboard this door. After you toss the cocktails, you hustle back down here and lock this door. It's no good to board it up because we'll have to get back in quickly. After we get the gas and get back into the house, then we'll worry about getting everybody into the truck. Now let's move it. There are no place to flee for safety, except to the rescue station which has been set up. Indications are that before this emergency is over, we will need many, many more such rescue stations. You always have a smile for me. How can you smile like that all the time? How many do you have done? Come on, honey, we gotta move. Tom, are you sure about the phone? The phone is dead out. All you get is a recorded message. If I could only call the folks, they're going to be so worried about us. Everything will be all right. As soon as we get to Willard, we'll call them. They might even be there. I know. Tom. Mm -hmm. Are you sure we're doing the right thing, Tom? What, about getting out of here? Yeah. Well, the television said that's the right thing to do. We've got to get to a rescue station. I don't know. Come on, honey, you're starting to sound like Mr. Cooper now. But why do you have to go out there? Look, I know how to handle that truck, and I can handle the pump. Ben doesn't know anything about that stuff. But we're safe in here. For how long, honey? We're safe now. But there's going to be more and more of those things. I know. I know all that. Hey, listen. Remember when we had the big flood? Remember how difficult it was for us to convince you that it was right to leave? Remember? Remember we had to go to Willard then? This isn't a passing thing, honey. It, it's not like just a wind passing through. We've got to do something, and fast. I just don't want you to go out there, that's all. Hey, Smiley. Where's that big smile for me? Boy, you're showing no use at all, are you? We've got work to do, honey. And you, you.
We better get her downstairs. We have to go downstairs now, Barbara. She's right. You have to go downstairs now, just for a little while, until we get back. Then we can all leave. Oh, I'd like to leave. Yes. Good luck. Yeah.
drag you out there and feed you those things. <laughs> It's three o'clock yet. There's supposed to be another broadcast at three o'clock. Ten minutes. Oh, only ten more minutes? We don't have very long to wait. We can leave. Well, we'd better leave soon. It's ten minutes to three. You know anything about this area at all? I mean, is Willard the nearest town? I don't know. We were just trying to get to a motel before dark. You say those things turned your car over. You think we can get it back on its wheels and drive it? Where is it? Seems like it was pretty far away. Seems like we ran. Forget it. It's at least a mile. Johnny has the keys. You're going to carry that child a mile through that army of things out there? I can carry the kid. What's wrong with her? How'd she get hurt? One of those things grabbed her. Bit her on the arm. What's wrong? Who knows what kind of disease those things carry? Is she conscious? Barely. She can't walk. She's too weak. Well, one of us could try to get to the car. You're going to turn it over by yourself? You can't start the car. Johnny has the keys. You have a car? Where? Where is it? You won't be able to start it. Yeah, yeah, I know. But where is it? <laughs> Good Lord. Being monitored closely by scientists at all the radiation detection stations. At this hour, they report the level of the mysterious radiation continues to increase steadily. So long as this situation remains, Government spokesmen warn that dead bodies will continue to be transformed into the flesh-eating ghouls. All persons who die during this crisis, from whatever cause, will come back to life to seek human victims unless their bodies are first disposed of by cremation. Our news cameras have just returned from covering such a search-and-destroy operation against the ghouls, this one conducted by Sheriff Conan McClellan in Butler County, Pennsylvania. So now let's go to that film report. All law enforcement agencies and the military have been organized to search out and destroy the marauding ghouls. The Survival Command Center at the Pentagon has disclosed that a ghoul can be killed by a shot in the head or a heavy blow to the skull. Officials are quoted as explaining that since the brain of a ghoul has been activated by the radiation, the plan is kill the brain and you kill the ghoul. 
Where anything from the supply wagon, Cus? Uh, no, we're all right. Okay. Hey, Cass, put that thing all the way in the fire. We don't want it getting up again. All right, I got you. Chief, Chief McClellan, how's everything going? Oh, things aren't going too bad. Men are taking it pretty good. You want to get on the other side of the road over there? Chief, do you think we'll be able to defeat these things? Well, we killed 19 of them today right in this area. Those last three we caught trying to claw their way into an abandoned shed. They must have thought somebody was in there. There wasn't, though. We heard them making all kind of noise. We came over and beat them off, blasted them down. Chief, as soon as you're finished, can I see you here? Yeah, okay. Chief, uh, if I were surrounded by six or eight of these things, would I stand a chance with them? Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot them in the head. That's a sure way to kill them. If you don't, get yourself a club or a torch. Beat them or burn them. They go up pretty easy. Well, Chief McClellan, how long do you think it will take you until you get the situation under control? Well, that's pretty hard to say. We don't know how many of them there are. We know when we find them, we can kill them. Are they slow moving, Chief? Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. Well, uh, in time, would you say you ought to be able to wrap this up in 24 hours? Well, we don't really know. We know we'll be into it most of the night, probably into the early morning. We're working our way toward Willard, and we'll team up with the National Guard over there, and then we'll be able to give a more definite view. Thank you very much, Chief McClellan. This is Bill Cardill, WIC TV 11 News. Thank you, Bill, for that report. Official spokesmen declined to speculate just how long it may take to kill off all the flesh eaters, so long as the heavy rain... <laughs> is the fuse box in the cellar? I don't know. I... It, it isn't the fuse. The power lines are down. Helen, I have to get that gun. Haven't you had enough? What? Two people are dead already on account of that guy. Take a look out that window. Click it.
We want to get about four or five men and a couple dogs. There's a house over here behind those trees. We want to go check it out. Frank, you stay here, Bill. Yeah, Chief. We're going to stay with it till we meet up with the National Guard. Where'd you get the coffee? One of the volunteers. You're doing all the work. You take it. Thank you. We should be wrapped up here about three or four more hours. We'll probably get into Willard then. I guess you can go over there and meet the National Guard. Nick, you and the rest of these men want to come with me? Well, Bill, I'm going to check in the office see what's happening. All right, Steve. Tell them we're going to stay with it, and uh, everything appears to be under control. <laughs> check out the house. Somebody had a cook out here, Vince. Yeah, sure looks like it, Cal. You, drag that out of here and throw it on the fire. There's nothing down here. All right, go ahead, Don, and give him a hand. Let's go check out the house. Man. There's something in there. I heard a noise. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. Good shot. OK, he's dead. Let's go get him. That's another one for the fire.
Just checking. It's all clear for now. Making sure there's no dial tone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, we've reached the end of our film, and I'd like to know, what's your take? You know, of course, for me, I love that in the end, nobody survives. No. None of the main characters that you you know, grow to love and you want to see them survive, they don't. No. I mean, I mean, everybody gets it. Right. You know, Tommy, Tommy and, uh, her name's Judy. Yes. You know, burned up. They get burned up, They yeah. get burned up and eaten. Yep. You know? And you know, Dwayne Jones, Ben, he's the hero. You want him to survive. He's made it through, yeah. you know? And he gets killed by the, the posse. Yeah, there. exactly. Exactly. You know, Judith O'Day, same thing. Yeah. You know? And you know, Dwayne Jones actually fought for this ending because they were told to change it because nobody would like such a downer of a film. Yeah. You know? And I'm glad that they kept, uh, you know, the original. Yes. Um, because they wanted them. The name was Night of the Flesh Eaters. Yes. Right? Right. And there already was a movie uh, called uh, The, the Flesh, Flesh Eaters, Eaters right? Yes. You know, a few years before. So they changed the name to Night of the Living Dead. They go, oh, you know, it's yeah, great. Sounds cool. great, right? Yeah. But they failed to copyright that, and that's why we can show it. That's right. Because that's right. Otherwise, this film would probably be on lockdown, like Stephen King films. Exactly. Exactly. But you know, maybe that helped propel this a little bit. I think know? it did. I think it did because anybody that's interested in horror films has to have seen this movie. Right. And. It is that good. It is. Now, you know, you really can't compare that with today's movies. No. At all. And why would you want to anyway? No. I mean, really. Yeah, you know? This movie has, it has more class to it. It does. And like we said, it propelled everything that we know, you know, lit, you know, after this as, yes. a, as a zombie movie. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, John Russo and uh, Russell Striner, yes. you know, they had also worked on... Return of the Living Dead. That's right. You know, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yes. And uh, because John Russo and George Romero disagreed on what the sequel should be. So they agreed that anything that Romero would do would be entitled with the word dead. John Russo's films would be entitled with the term Living Dead. Right. Hence, Return of the Living Dead. Right. And, uh, you know, I like both of those films films I like you know, I do Return oh, yeah. of the Living Dead yeah I love Return of the Living Dead I think that's a it's great it's a movie. great film yeah it really is it really is it's surprising that it took them that long to make it I know I know but they made a great one they did you know and again everybody involved in this film was involved on many levels so oh, many yeah. aspects of this film now here's my question what if they were like you know you were in this film you know your buddies with them guys and they're like hey you gotta eat these uh, pig entrails I'll be like, I'm just a walker. <laughs> yeah. I'm one of them slow walking ones. <laughs> Don't you got some chipped ham for you me know, to eat? Fully clothed. <laughs> fully clothed, yeah. <laughs> right? I'm not eating any bugs. <laughs> right, I'm not eating no bugs. You know, I'm not nude. That's, I'll be like, I'll be over there. I'll be the one over there. Well, you know, the, uh, the blood in this film, a lot of it was chocolate syrup. Because, you know, it films very well in black and white. Right, right. And uh, Kyra Schoen, the daughter, the little girl, mm -hmm. she said that in the scene that when they were showing her eat her father's arm, that that was from the lunch table. It was a meatball with some chocolate syrup on it. I ain't eating that. I know, that's pretty gross. I'm, that is gross. I'm, I'm be like, where's the pig know. entrails? <laughs> 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 right? I'm just exactly, you know. you know. Again, I'll be the one walking over there. That's right. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not chewing on nothing. You no, know, I'm not that I'm not a hungry zombie. You know, but sometimes I think you'll be surprised that people would go, I'll do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I'll be that yeah. one. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, I guess that when the word got out that there was going to be a nude zombie, which there was, and she was an art model from Pittsburgh. All the locals came out with their lawn chairs and set them up around the farmhouse there. Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, can you imagine being one of the zombies, right? And uh, okay, you know, yeah. And she's walking by, and you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sure I would be. I'd be like, yeah. What? Yeah, don't put the camera on his so face. It's like, just you know, just show them from the neck down. So, <laughs> you know, that exactly. kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. 
But overall, we both love this film. Yeah. And our favorite host of Creature Features, Bill Cardill, was yeah. the news reporter. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And you know, he really did work for Channel 11. Um, yes. Um, he did He did radio, and he did uh, Saturday Night Wrestling. Yes. As well. He was a multi-talented. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he, he does a great job at this as well. And you know, the uh, interview with the sheriff, I love it, because he says to him, you know, so, you know, what what are what are they like? And he's like, ah, they're all messed up. Right. That's what you would say. That's exactly what you would say, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, really, you know, that, on the spot. That is something. You yes. Know, that you might say. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but fantastic. It's a fantastic it film. It really is. It really is. We thank you for being here at Newcastle After Dark. Hope you join us again for the lost treasure in cinema. Until next time, good night.